Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, we've just finished spring cleaning our Harley Botanic greenhouse, rotivating the soils and getting it all ready for the new growing season. So what we're going to do now is go all the way back to the beginning of how we've done it so you can do it at home. Okay, so first things first, we just have to remove any of the remaining vegetation from the containers just so we can then take them out of the greenhouse a little bit easier. Next up, we're just taking the containers off one by one and removing them from the space. Uh, we're taking out our marble containers here and we're going to replace them with millstone containers a little bit later on. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here then, we're just going around with our Henry Hoover, just trying to remove any major debris, uh, spider's web, that kind of thing. And now we're just going to sweep out the area, just trying to remove all of that major debris, uh, dust, stones, compost fragments, that kind of thing. We're going to sweep it up nicely so we can remove it easily. Okay, so you can see exactly how dirty the, uh, the surround of the greenhouse is. Uh, our greenhouse floor is actually made from free draining brick. So what we're going to do now is just work really methodically around it with our power washer, just going brick by brick to just try and remove whatever we can uh, from the surface. This is quite a time intensive activity, but it's definitely the best way of removing that stubborn dirt and grime without resorting to hard chemicals. Okay, so while we do try and avoid using chemicals wherever possible, we live in quite a hard water area, uh, which means we do get quite a lot of lime scale. So the best way to remove that is using Viacal. The product does contain formic acid and citric acid, so it can cause irritation. Uh, that's why I'm wearing goggles and uh, a mask here. Even using the Viacal, the lime scale can be really stubborn, so we recommend just leaving it on for about five minutes. Uh, you'll know it's ready because it'll start to fizz. Uh, and then you can go around again with your steam cleaner. The mop attachment on a steam cleaner is a really helpful tool for most of it, uh, but if you have one available then definitely try and use the fine bristle attachment. Uh, as you can see it's actually amazing at removing algae from those really tight spaces that otherwise you can't really touch. Okay, so now we've used the Viacal, it's really important that we wash everything off properly. Uh, if we don't, then it can actually start to corrode at the powder coated finish of the greenhouse itself. As you can see, it's then really just a case of repeating the process on every single wall and the roof of the greenhouse until you've completed the whole area. For the purposes of time budgeting, this entire process for us probably took between four or five hours. So it is a, it is a big chunk of the afternoon. So as you can see, this is really effective at removing that dirt and grime. It's left a little bit of a residue, but that's literally just the calcium carbonate from the hard water. Now as I say, the base of our greenhouse is actually made from free draining brick, which does mean it's quite naturally porous. So what we're doing here is applying a stabilising solution which just reduces that porosity, which then makes it harder in turn for dirt and grime to stick. It does take a little bit of time, but here we're using a small hand roller just so we can really work it into each brick individually. As you can see with the floors and windows clean, it's a massive improvement. Next thing we have to do then is just reinstate the planter frames and then we're just going around these thoroughly with just a rag and a bit of WD-40 just to really shine them up and make them look as good as possible. Now as promised we're replacing our marble containers with millstone containers from outside. That's just because the marble containers have done quite a few seasons with nutrient intensive crops like tomatoes and chilies so we're just giving those a little bit of time to recover and replacing them with new containers with fresher soils that we've already topped up with compost. Okay, so the very last job we have to do then is just attach our drip irrigation lines. Uh, these are already connected to an automatic tap timing unit uh, for fully automatic watering. Okay then, well that's everything. 
We have a tidy greenhouse with fresh soils and low maintenance, fully self-watering rose planter kit that's ready to go. Well, there we are then, that's everything. I really hope you found it helpful. If you did, then please remember to like and subscribe for more content. And if you would like to learn more about the range of greenhouse and polytunnel kits we offer, then please feel free to head over to ergonomics.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.